Today we're going to take a look at the Singer EM9305 embroidery sewing machine. Now it's not actually a sewing machine as such, it doesn't do standard sewing functions, but it is a dedicated embroidery machine. So we'll take a look at this today, just a, an overview really on this machine. And if we have a look up just here, I'm not sure if you can see that, heavy duty, says here metal frame. So you know it'll have a, a metal chassis, I get that, guess that's what they mean there. Sewing made easy, colour touch screen, um, 150 included embroidery designs, accessories included. If we have a look on the side of the box here, we've got a history timeline here, 1851. First Singer brand sewing machine is patented on August 12th, 1851. Down here, get you in for a close look at these. And if we move up the timeline there, we can see we've got the Slantomatic here. First zigzag, 1952, the first zigzag machine, Singer Slantomatic, is developed. So, yeah, really good sewing machine. You can't go past a Slantomatic. And then if we come up to the top here, we've got the Singer brand continues to be the best selling sewing machine brand in the world. Okay, let's have a look what we get here. We've got a inspection certificate there, a remove shipping brace instructions. We've got a license activation code for the Premier Plus 2 warranty. Electronic machines, five year warranty, first and second year warranty parts and warranty labour provided free of charge third to fifth year all warranty parts will be provided free of charge and we have a, a manual user's manual here user's guide and that's the large hoop a large hoop there and a dust cover okay this. Oh, some accessories there. We'll go through that later on. Let's get this out onto the table. So we've got the embroidery attachment there. And the machine itself. Okay, so we've got some tape that needs to come off here that's just holding the this front cover down. There's a little piece of polystyrene here for that. And then we've also got some tape around the arm here. And if we have a look around the side here, we've got the hand wheel here. We have the USB port for plugging in USB memory sticks. So that's how you transfer your designs to the, to the embroidery machine. Uh, on off switch and the power socket there takes a standard uh, figure eight type power cord there. The manual is actually pretty good, you know, nice and clearly laid out there, giving you the machine overview, the accessories that come with it. I won't go through this in detail, uh, connecting the machine up, the USB port, and a couple of notes on the likes of the spool pin there. So if we pop up the front cover there, you can orientate the spool pin in either the horizontal position or the vertical like that there. And we've got an optional spool pin here on the right hand side at the top. So yep, manual goes through threading here. I'm sure you can download this manual online if you want to take a look at it. Uh, if I find it I'll leave a link in the description below. I'll grab some thread and we'll thread it up and wind a bobbin. 
Okay, I've plugged it in there. I'll just uh, flick on the power switch there. Okay. Does it take long to boot? Is it still booting? Yeah, I think it might it might be booting, is it? Initializing as such. Yep, there we go. Okay. Well let's start by winding a bobbin. I've got a got a bobbin here. Place that on the bobbin winder. I'll use the vertical spool pin there. Take the large spool holder off and set it on the vertical spool there. I've just got some a spun polyester. It's you know, I mean by rights I probably should use something like bobbin fill. To, uh, bobbin fill is a finer thread and even finer than this. This is a uh, 40 by 2. Just come across here underneath this plate here. Okay, and then we come down through the bobbin tensioner there. It's the bobbin winder tensioner up through the little thread guide and we'll just wind it around the bobbin there. Go around a few times there and then we can just trim that off on the little cutter on the side there. Engage the bobbin winder. We've now got a bobbin winding icon here and a speed controller slider here and then we've just got a go stop here. So I'll just make sure that just make sure that thread there is taken up there and let's go. And we'll slide that down. Just stop that. Just want to see whether I can adjust the speed. Okay, it took me a, took me a second to. I haven't read the manual <laughs> properly. You have to hold on the little button here for the speed slider until it turns green, and then you can slide the speed up and down. Like that. So if we go. pause and continue okay and we'll just take the bobbin off there and that's ready to thread into the machine there this should be fairly straightforward just slide the little bobbin cover off there okay so the bobbin goes in so that when you pull the thread off the bobbin it turns anti-clockwise that so you just drop the bobbin straight in there and you come right across to the right hand side. You pull the thread over to the right there and then you just pull it around. There's actually a little arrow there. I'm not sure if you can see that. A little arrow there. Come along and around this piece here. And then down here and just pull, hook it around this little finger here and pull to the left like that. And that gives you enough length to start sewing there. And then just slide the bobbin cover on like so. So as far as top thread goes, I'm just going to use this Madeira embroidery thread here. Got like a fairly bright sort of green here just for contrast. And I'll be using the horizontal spool pin here. So we'll put this back on here. The large, that's the largest spool keeper. And we'll sit the, is that long enough? Mm. No, take that off. So we should be able to just sit that on there and we'll put the medium sized spool keeper on there and let's just thread that. So we come down over the back of this plate here, down here, and we just follow around this channel here and we just follow the arrows. So there's an arrow here. We go right down 
around here, back up this arrow here, around the back of the take up lever here, down, follow this arrow, and then we're ready to uh, start threading the needle there. I'll get you in for a close look at that. And then we bring the thread down and around behind this little thread guide here, pull it around to the front there, and then hold the thread underneath this little bar here, that's the uh, automatic needle threader, this little guide here, and come up around the side here, come up over here, and trim the thread there. So hook the thread underneath the little needle threader bar here, come down, swing the needle threader into position, and bring the thread over the front of the that guide there, and then just hold it in that little slot there and that threads the needle there. By the way this is not a paid promotion by Singer. So any machine that you see on my channel generally uh, I've purchased it or uh, I've bought it in for a customer or it's a customer's machine that's in for repair. Yeah I just thought I'd uh, make that clear. Just taking note of the shipping brace that needs to be removed here from the embroidery unit. We just tip the embroidery unit over here. That's the shipping brace there. That needs to be removed to there. And then the embroidery unit just slides onto the arm like that there. And then push it, push it to there. To remove the embroidery unit, there's a handhold under here and you just grip under there, pull a little lever towards the outside and then just pull the unit off there. To set up the fabric into the hoop there, just un undo this little lever here, and the inner comes away from the outer there. And you'll also notice there's a, an arrow here on the inner, which matches an arrow here on the outer. Okay, and then we just lay the stabilizer fabric over the top of the outer hoop there and then I've got just a little bit of white it's a just a piece of scrap material and then once you've got that in position there you just sit the inner hoop and push down the inner into the outer there, might need to be loosened slightly. Push that down like so. You might be able to see a few little wrinkles there. You can pull those wrinkles out just by gently easing them out. You don't want to be stretching the fabric when you do that. Just ease that out there. Maybe from the from the ends there. Just like that there. And then we go ahead and clamp it in with this lever here. That's quite tight there, so I'm just loosening this nut here, the screw. It's still a bit tight, just going to Yep, that's got it there. So you really just want to loosen this until this lever here is, is firm but not too tight to clamp in there. And there we go. To install the hoop here, we slide this section of the hoop up into the embroidery attachment slide here. So just slide that until it clicks. Might have to push this button here, yep, just to help it. And the button locates down to show that it's in position there. And you can see there that the press foot is on the outside of the hoop at this stage. More than likely before we actually go this far though, I think that the uh, embroidery attachment needs to be calibrated. So we'll probably end up taking this off. Um, but the machine will tell us, and I better just remove this just in case. So to remove is basically just the opposite to the installation here. Push the 
button and slide the embroidery hoop forward just like so. If the embroidery attachment's not calibrated uh, we'll get a pop-up message. This orange, orangey sort of goldy colored button that's the start menu. So hit start menu like that and then we go to design menu there and then we've we can see a list of built-in designs can we scroll through yeah so we can scroll through designs there i'll choose something that i've got my, maybe choose something that my niece might like <laughs> uh, so you can see quite a few different designs there She's into animals or dragons. She's into dragons at the moment. Not many dragons on here though. Let's do a butterfly. Maybe this colorful one here. Not sure if I've got the correct colors to suit that one. And then, so this is the pattern that's selected. And then, so we're in edit mode here. Uh, I won't go through editing in this video here, uh, but apparently when you're ready to go, you can hit the go button. It hasn't prompted me for calibration so I'm just going to reload the unit here okay here it's asking me to calibrate so let's remove the hoop clear embroidery arm for calibration calibrate embroidery unit okay let's have a wee look at what calibration does here Okay, it's telling me to attach the hoop. That, and then go okay here. And now that that's done, you'll notice the go, little go button that was here is turned into a stitch out icon. And the stitch out icon is basically telling you that you're ready to go. So I'll hold the thread here and then hit the go button here. Get you a closer look at that. I'll just unpause there again. Is that a thread break? No, it's just that might be. I think that's stopping to. Um, I should have chosen monochrome. It's, I think it's that broke the thread. Yep, that thread break. That's actually my fault in a way. I had the large spool holder on here and the thread fell off the cone and fell down into this little gap here. You can see there the thread was trapping in here. While it was sewing there you could probably hear it. It was making a clacking noise and I think the thread was trapping down in here. Uh, you can see it there and that's so that's my fault. That's for not uh, you know choosing the right cap probably these cones here are actually designed up for upright and i think what i need to do with this particular cone is i need to put the little sleeve on this little mesh sleeve here and that will stop uh you know this sort of the thread from sort of falling off here i could put it vertically you know like that there the problem with doing that is that introduces uh, some tension here because it's got to you know pull the entire this sort of a you know this is a reasonably heavy cone you know relatively and just the weight of the cone just to turn it like that introduces more tension to the top so i there's two ways to deal with this one is that I'll slip this little mesh over like that. I need to pull the thread. Just need to pull the thread through it. Pull that through. Slip that over there. And the other option is possibly a vertical, a vertical type thread stand. 
yeah now that's coming off nicely there you can see that it, this little sock here kind of just keeps stops the thread from falling off Jeez, look. is that a power cut i think we just had a power cut yep that's power cut oh well, um yep <laughs> uh come back when the when the power comes back on okay power's back on all righty so what I plan on doing is manually stepping through the design without stitching, coming around to about maybe the top of the wing up here, just to pick up the uh, design from where we left off. I'll reposition the design on the um, in the hoop. Right. Attach the hoop. Okay. Okay, here, all right, and then we've got uh, re reposition. So this little icon here allows us to reposition the design in the hoop here. So let's go. Or can we? Yeah, so you can drag it with the stylus here. So let's put it right up on the top corner there it doesn't let you go outside of the bounds so you can see I'll show you what that's doing so if I reposition here reposition the top corner top left bottom left bottom right so let's let's go for top top right hand corner here Pretty close to the top, top right there. Click OK. Radio, and let's start a uh, let's start that again. I'll go to monochrome also. So I've just flipped over to monochrome there. I'll show you that again. That's monochrome. So there's color. Okay. So when each color has been embroidered out. You know when it gets to the point where it's, it wants to change color it stops and prompts you to you know and put the next color thread on and then we'll start sewing the next color and it'll stop when that one's done and prompt you for the next one uh, but because i'm just doing a test run here and i just want to do like a monochrome type stitch out with the green here I'll just hit and you can see there it's changed it to a gray scale so this will be a design just done in green Okay, and now we're ready to go here. It's asking for change thread color because I didn't tell it to do monochrome that time. Just go OK here. Let's see if we can change it to monochrome on the fly. There we go. Radio. Right let's, let's go for the next run here.
I may speed this up or jump forward uh, from time to time so just be aware of that so I'll uh, yeah that's doing a nice job there Doing the long stitches there so it's slowing down. Yeah, it seems to be doing quite a nice job there. It's quite mesmerizing watching these machines do their thing. <laughs> I guess it'll get boring after a while, but...
go, that's it. And the screen there says embroidery finished. Okay there, looking pretty good. Uh, so, you know, uh, the next test I'll do is to come out of monochrome and we'll go to color here, full color. So we've got like a goldy color here for the middle, a purple type color there. And um, yeah, maybe is that red? I can't quite see there, or a pinky color maybe. Uh, but I guess this, that'll uh, prompt on the screen to change the colors. I guess you could choose any color you like, really. Uh, but let's do that. I'll change it to color mode. And then we'll shift the design here down to... I'm not sure if it's going to overlap on what I've already attempted here. I guess I could just unpick that later. Um, that shouldn't take too long. But let's, uh, let's try some colors here. Okay, so I've got this sort of a, a brownie colour, more like a goldy type colour, and a sort of a sky blue. I think that might uh, look quite good. Go there. Just going to stop quickly there and trim that thread off there. Might be able to see there that it's suggesting this color here Robertson Anton Rayon 40 and with the color 2489 <laughs> but yeah I'm just going to go with the this sort of goldy color here okay there's the goldy color let's hit the go switch there Pausing there for a second. I just find it's easy to trim these threads off. I just find it's easy to trim the threads when it's it hasn't gone too far there. Okay, it's asking for, it's like a purpley colour. I do have some purple. I thought I had some. I uh, found it eventually. Okay, ready to go there.
Let's go. Sure, you can see that, but the you can see the little cursor following the path there. It shows you where you're up to in the design. here, bright yellow. Not sure if you noticed then, but the trimmer actually actuated there. I didn't realize it did that. And trimmed, although I had a long tail here, it did a few stitches and then trimmed the thread after it had started sewing and so that the tail came out and uh, you know detached from the start there quite handy Okay, let's see if it trims the thread this time. At the start, I've got this long tail here. So let's just hit go here. One stitch. And yeah, trimmed it. That's nice. Here we go, all finished. It looks pretty good. There's my failed attempt there and there we've got the monochrome uh, green colored butterfly there. So yeah, yeah I think that that does quite a nice job actually. There's the reverse side. You can see the uh, tension's looking pretty good there. So yeah, had a couple of little teething problems there but Got it sorted in the end, uh, mainly just user issues. Well, all user issues actually. But yeah, you know, sometimes uh, it takes a little bit just to uh, get to know a machine and get to know that it, if it's got any little quirks or anything like that. I don't think it's got any quirks as such. It's just, um, yeah, mainly user issue, but it's probably a matter of paying more attention to the manual and things like that. So can't really uh, blame the machine for that. Uh, but all in all, yep, I'm really impressed. I'm not going to go too much further into all the intricacies with all the settings and the designs. I might have a little bit more of a play and then come back with uh, more videos once I, uh, you know, get deeper into what the capabilities of this machine is. So I hope you found that interesting and thank you as always to my patrons on Patreon and thank you very much for watching.